the slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll never show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit Welcome back everyone. Today, we're talking about something truly special. The world's first humanoid robot games in Beijing, where the competition was fierce, the breakthroughs were real, and yes, the fails were absolutely priceless. The star of the show, Unitree's H1 robot, a machine that didn't just participate, but dominated, all while setting new speed records. But this event was about so much more than just one robot's victory, that's not all. We've got Vietnam's impressive dancing androids making their debut. A shocking $34.5 billion bid for Chrome that's making waves. And some serious debate about whether humanoid robots even need legs. It's a fascinating look at where robotics is right now. Equal parts inspiring and hilariously imperfect. Let's break it all down. Beijing just made history with the world's first world humanoid robot games kicked off with some serious action. We're talking over 500 robots from 280 teams across 16 countries, including tech powerhouses like Japan, Germany, and the US, competing in 26 different sports. And right from the starting gun, Unitree's H1 humanoid made its mark. This 47 kilos machine, priced at 650,000 yuan, which is about $90,500, didn't just compete, it dominated. The H1 took gold in the 1,500 meters with a time of 6 minutes 34 seconds and 40 milliseconds, plus another gold in the 400 meters at 1 minute 28 seconds and 3 millisecond, though the actual stopwatch showed an even faster 1 minute 23 seconds and 3 millisecond. Hitting speeds up to 3.3 meters per second, it set new benchmarks for bipedal robots. Not bad for the same model that performed traditional Yangge dances during China's Spring Festival Gala earlier this year. It wasn't all smooth sailing. At one point, an H1 robot smacked into an operator during a controller handoff. Oof, bad timing, right? Turns out the remote controls weren't just a preference. They were a necessity. The H1's good, but at full sprint, it still can't quite handle balance and terrain on its own. Things like sensor lag, instability mid-stride, or sudden bumps meant human adjustments were crucial to keep it from face planting. So yeah, the collision was awkward, but it also forced a bigger question. If these bots need constant human babysitting just to stay upright at speed, maybe remote control isn't the answer, especially when humans and robots are sharing tight spaces. However, Unitree's founder Wang Xingjing called their performance meaningful since the H1 represents their first humanoid model. The competition was fierce, though. Beijing's ex-humanoid brought their Tiankung Ultra model, the same one that won April's historic human and robot half marathon, which secured second place. Meanwhile, events ranged from track to basketball, kickboxing, and even dance performances where bots grooved to pop music. China is positioning this not as a showcase. Organizers are calling it a test field, to evaluate robot capabilities in complex, real-world scenarios. As one official put it, this is about pushing the limits of decision-making, balance and collaboration systems, leveraging China's strong supply chains to test these technologies in practical settings. Now for the moments that had everyone talking, the spectacular fails that made this event equal parts competition and comedy show. During the opening ceremony, one humanoid was nailing its routine until it completely face-planted, requiring two humans to carry it off stage. And that set the tone for what became a highlight reel of robotic mishaps. The 1500 meters race alone had multiple wipeouts. Some robots couldn't even get off the starting line, while others collapsed mid-stride at full speed, drawing gasps and some cheers from the crowd who paid $25 to $80 tickets to witness this. One contestant, the Xingjie Taishan from Shandong's Robotics, took a nasty fall that cost it an arm, but in a show of determination it kept going and finished to applause. The soccer matches were particularly chaotic. There was this moment when one robot's fall created a domino effect, taking down several others in a tangle of limbs that needed human intervention to untangle. Though to be fair, there were impressive moments too. 
like when one bot finally scored after multiple attempts, causing the opposing goalie to dramatically collapse in what looked like robotic despair. German team HTWK Robots from Leipzig University had the right perspective. Their player Max Poulter explained, We come to play and win, but we're really here to research. Failing here means we don't waste millions developing something that doesn't work. That's exactly what organizers emphasized. These public failures provide crucial data for improving real-world applications in factories and other practical settings. The variety was incredible. College teams like Shandong Jiaotong University competed with budget robots, some built for just 50,000 yuan, while the opening ceremony featured robots dancing, doing martial arts, and even playing musical instruments. Some executed perfect backflips, others, well, let's just say their recovery attempts became part of the entertainment. But in all honesty, while we saw robots that could sprint, score goals, or get back up after falls, we also saw plenty that reminded us why humanoid robotics is still very much a work in progress. And that's what made it so fascinating to watch. Next, Vietnam just made its grand entrance into humanoid robotics, with a show-stopping performance that turned heads worldwide. VinMotion, a Vin Group-backed startup founded just seven months ago, unveiled its humanoid robots performing perfectly synchronized dance routines during Vin Group's 32nd anniversary celebration. And these weren't pre-programmed movements. The robots used real-time distance sensors and onboard AI to maintain stability and sync with each other, performing flawlessly in front of over 1,000 attendees, despite potential Wi-Fi interference from the crowd. VinMotion chairman Nguyen Trung Quan explained how they pulled this off. We optimized real-time computing and network infrastructure to achieve near-perfect synchronization between the robots. The team built everything in-house, mechanical systems, electronics, and software, focusing on reliable balance and precise timing rather than scripting every move. Quan sees this as Vietnam's moment to shine in robotics noting the country doesn't face the same cost barriers or trust issues as China and the U.S., calling this the golden time for Vietnam to establish itself as a tech leader. Backed by Vingroup's $39 million investment and drawing support from sister companies like VinAI and VinFast, VinMotion is already looking beyond dance performances. They're targeting practical applications in manufacturing, logistics, healthcare, and customer service with plans to deploy multiple robots working together in real-world settings soon. In what might be the most audacious tech acquisition attempt of the year, AI startup Perplexity, itself valued at $18 billion, has made an unsolicited $34.5 billion all-cash offer to buy Google's Chrome browser. Yes, you heard that right. A three-year-old company wants to purchase one of the world's most widely used software products with over 3 billion users. Perplexity's chief business officer, Dmitry Shevalenko, confirmed the offer, stating that multiple large investment funds have agreed to finance the deal, though he didn't name which ones. The proposal comes at a critical moment as Google faces a US antitrust ruling that could force it to divest Chrome. The Department of Justice has specifically suggested selling Chrome as a remedy for Google's search monopoly with a judge's final decision expected soon. The offer includes some interesting commitments. $3 billion for Chrome development, keeping Chromium open source, maintaining current search defaults, and retaining Chrome's engineering talent. Perplexity claims this approach avoids antitrust issues while providing stability for Google's advertisers. But analysts note Chrome might be worth closer to $50 billion, and Google shows no interest in selling planning to appeal any antitrust ruling. For Perplexity, this is about controlling the gateway to search as AI reshapes how we find information online. Chrome's dominance gives Google an enormous advantage in promoting its AI features over competitors like Perplexity's own search engine. While the bid seems unlikely to succeed, it highlights how valuable browser access has become in the AI era and how far startups are willing to go to challenge tech giants. This comes after Perplexity's earlier attempt to merge with TikTok's US operations, showing the company isn't shy about making bold plays. 
While humanoid robots are grabbing headlines with flashy stunts, Kinesi Robotics founder Bren Pierce is taking a more pragmatic approach. His company's wheeled KR-1 robot skips the legs entirely, focusing instead on what warehouses actually need – reliable, 24-7 performance. The KR-1 can handle 10 kilos payloads, operates for 8 hours on a charge with swappable batteries, and uses demonstration-based AI that lets workers train it in minutes without coding. Pierce, who previously founded Bear Robotics, calls the current humanoid hype a bubble. Customers want robots that show up to work, he says, pointing out that most industrial environments don't need backflips. They need machines that won't fall over. Kinesi's approach leverages existing AI models rather than reinventing both hardware and software, focusing on the 70% of warehouses that can't justify massive automation budgets. Having already deployed prototypes and pilot programs, Pierce's philosophy is simple. Solve today's labor shortages with practical robots that work alongside humans, not science fiction prototypes that look cool in demos but can't handle real warehouse conditions. So who's leading the robot revolution? Unitree's raw speed, Vietnam's elegant debut, or Kinesi's no-nonsense approach? And would you take that $34.5 billion Chrome deal? Drop your thoughts below, hit subscribe, and let's keep tracking where this wild tech future takes us. Catch you next time.